Hello, hello, happy Wednesday. Welcome to Stamping A to Z. I'm Linda Gibbs. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Canada. Stamping A to Z is my weekly live that I do here on Facebook. I am hoping to start streaming to YouTube as well to do the two lives together so we can see in the chat, but I haven't figured that out yet. I've started. <laughs> I haven't got there yet. Hopefully I'll get there soon. So if you're watching here on Facebook and you have friends who maybe um, are not and they but they do go on YouTube, I do post my videos onto YouTube afterwards, so you can always send them there. Um, if you have friends that you think would like this, I would love it if you can share. That was the best compliment you can give me. If you're watching, please let me know you're watching. If you're watching the replay, let me know you're watching the replay and where you're watching from. That would be great. I'd love to hear from you. Um, today we're going to be playing with more, actually you can kind of see them in the background there. <laughs> I didn't hide them very well. Um, we're going to be playing with embossing folders. Um, two of them are from the new online exclusive, um, items that just got released yesterday. So if you haven't checked out the online exclusives, I did do a sneak peek of what I got out of it. Um, not last week, the week before. Um, I wasn't here last week. I apologize. Um, and then, um, yeah, so you can check out the one from two weeks ago or my last video and then, um, or you can go on my store and you can go into online exclusives and it has all the new released products. Um, some of them are already back ordered, unfortunately, but this seems to be, I don't know, this, maybe it's a good problem to have. So, uh, let me get you turned around and we'll get started right away. Let's get crafting. If you have embossing folders, hang on, let me get you switched around here. Oop. Make you all dizzy. And you want to craft along, please feel free. Now, I'm going to bring this down. A lot of times my iPad freezes up on me and I can't see what I'm streaming. And then I can see the comments though, so don't be shy to comment. Um, but yeah, I end up kind of, I move down, down, down as I'm crafting and I don't want to do that to you guys. So hopefully... Here we go. Okay. So I can see it. Just hopefully it doesn't freeze up. Please don't freeze up. All right. So the online exclusives, um, this is the QR code for it. So um, if you screenshot, you could possibly just click on there and it'll take you straight to, um, but it won't take you to my store. So if you want to go onto my store, you just have to go under the menu and go into online exclusives. Um, this is one of the um, sweets, I guess, that uh, I showcased last week. And we're going to be using the embossing folder today, the Zinnia embossing folder. Um, but I think I'm going to save that one for last. For now, I think I'm going to start with Easter is around the corner, which is crazy to think how fast it has come <laughs> or it is coming. And... So I thought I would do a bit of an Easterish card. Easterish. It's pretty Easter. You could turn it more into spring if you wanted to. Um, so these are two new embossing folders that are on the online exclusives. Oh, sorry. I tried to stay out of um my <laughs> the I was trying to wa do the Facebook um watching on the the back oh hi Marcy oh I'm glad you're creating with me I hope you have embossing folders with you and you can totally play along so these are two of the new ones what's cool about these ones so I never really have loved these mini ones other than they fit in the mini stamp and cut machine and which is great if you're traveling or whatever but I didn't like that whenever I ran them through I'd get like that line and you, it was really hard to match things up because if they're not like a symmetrical pattern, it's really hard to line it up. But these ones are symmetrical patterns. So you can totally line them up and you can do a full page instead of just doing 
a partial. So, I mean, you can totally do a partial. There's lots of card layouts that you can do a partial with. But I like that you have the option to do a full panel if you want to, which is nice. So to me, this is super springy um, floral. I thought it would be cute with the Easter stuff. So I've got a piece of uh, basic white and I'm going to use, if I can grab all my stuff here, I'm going to use some pretty Easter colors. Now I'm like going too high. <laughs> so I don't know, you probably can't even see the, ah, my host coat and stuff. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Dear. So I've got Lemon Lolly, Pool Party, and Bubble Bath. Those are the colors I'm going to use for Easter, which seem Easter to me. Then, now, where did my... This is not the one I used for pink. Where's my Bubble Bath? brush that I was using. I need a blending. My blending brush is missing. I have three of them here. There's a... I know for a fact I did not use this on the bubble bath because it... oh it's just turned over. My goodness I'm blind. Okay it's too close. <laughs> okay so I and I um, we've talked about this before. If you don't have a glass mat you can always use Oh, I froze up again. Um, you can always use um, a block. Same same idea. Um, I just find it easier to get a nice blend. Um, I'm just going to color the background before I do the embossing. And you will see why in a minute. Um, you can use, you can do this a lot of ways. If you don't want to use blending brushes, you can use... Um, the new brayer. You can use any brayer. <laughs> um, you can use, you could just put ink direct to paper this way, but I'm doing the three colors. Um, so I'm going to just kind of blend them into one another. So when you're doing kind of blending, it's easier, I find, to use a blending brush. You could watercolor. You could actually... I didn't even think to, you can use a jelly plate that gets color spread out or even just um, putting ink down. Like I could put the ink down here and spray it and then just put my paper down. But then I would have to deal with drying. And while on video, that's probably not the best option because you guys would be twiddling your thumbs as we were waiting for it to dry. So... We will, the one that, you know, I spent forever wishing we had smaller brushes and then they came out with smaller brushes, but now I'm kind of wishing we had some bigger brushes for things like this, it's just to make it go a little bit faster. I know there are larger brushes out there available, um, but it's nice when I can do a one-stop shop. So, all right, we've got pink. I don't know if that's enough pink. Well, we'll put some yellow down and then we'll see how that goes. And I have decided I prefer to um, do it this way because it doesn't pull as much ink from the ink pad. So you're not having to re-ink your ink pads as much. It's not as much wear and tear on the ink pads because you're not brushing your ink pads constantly so I don't know I just kind of like the idea of and I just find it just I find it it avoids those like splotchy spots that you get if you go straight from your ink pad where you have a really concentrated spot don't mind the color for some reason I had two I don't know, I had multiples of grays, so like, <laughs> I think I need to wash my brushes and like start over and label them and stick to the color families that they belong to because they're kind of ugly looking right now. So just don't look at them. 
I can't even look at them. They're horrible. Okay, we've got some good yellow going. Eh, I should have used it up a little bit more. May as well use it if I got it. Okay, we'll wipe that so we don't put yellow into our blue. I love these colors. I was a super pastel. I wasn't like a girly girl, but I don't know. When I was in my teens, I loved pastels for some reason, like pastel blues. And like, I think pool party was probably one of my favorite colors, and it still is. My uh, the walls of our house are pretty much pool party. What you doing, Aspen? Sorry, puppy's coming to visit. Hopefully she doesn't to get out. Those of you that don't know, we had to say goodbye to one of our pups um, on Monday. And so now the other one is a little bit lost, wondering where her sister is. Okay. It's a little too much yellow, but eh, oh well, it is what it is. It'll still be good. Um, okay, so the next step is to do the embossing. So I'm going to move all of this and I'm going to pull out my big, big boss. Um, because we can't put a full piece of paper, even though. Um, it's a smaller embossing folder. You can't run a full piece of paper through the mini. So I've got, and it's not a 3D. So the sandwich you need is the number one plate. And then you need two, two clear cutting plates. So I keep two plates complete. Well, I think the odd time I do have accidents with stuff. Um, I do try and keep um, completely new plates for embossing because then you just don't get, I don't know, I think I was getting like marks and stuff from my really cut up plates. Hi, Yolan, nice to see you. So I just, I keep some designated embossing plates. So I'm taking a wet wipe and I'm just going to wet kind of half of it for now because it's not going to do the whole thing. And I'm going to put it in only oh that's not the way I want to put it in okay I went the wrong side to start well I guess I never mind we'll just do it from left to right right to left right to left <laughs> okay so I've got it partially in like so and then we're just gonna run it through I'm gonna run it through a second time just to make sure it's good. I don't like to go back and forth. You can. I see lots of people do it, but the thing that you risk is that when you're going back, if it buckles a little bit, it's putting a lot of pressure on the spine of your folder. And so eventually your folder probably would crack and break. So I prefer to just run it, take it through and do it again. Isn't that cool? Okay, so now I want Obviously, I'm missing a part, so I'm going to take my wipe again because, you know, it just gives you that much better of an impression, and then I want to go in and line it up. So what I do is I take the back side here, and you can kind of see where things are. It's not, I'm not going to lie. It's not the easiest thing to do, but it's also not the hardest. See, now it just kind of 
locked into place. I'm not quite, I need to move over one though because it's um, not happy with me. There we go. So it's all locked in again. So I know I'm lined up and I'm just gonna put it down. I don't know if you could see that. And since this side isn't in the, it's not gonna get flattened or anything because it's just kind of hanging loose there. May as well do it twice, just like the other one. Sorry, I'm probably making you seasick <laughs> with the rocking. Okay, boom. And then we've got our fully embossed sheet of you don't go back and forth because I told you not to. <laughs> Good listening. <laughs> um, yeah, so I never go back and forth and I've never had any. And so, yeah, you can't even, I don't know about you, but I cannot tell where actually there is a wee bit of a line. Wee bit, but it's going to get covered anyways. So now this is not anything special. You guys know how to do all of this stuff, right? Like color and boss. Okay, what's the special part? The special part is I want the raised edges to be white. So today I'm gonna to show you three different ways of having the raised portion of your embossed images be white. So this first one is pretty easy. You need a brayer, you need some Versamark, you need some white embossing powder, but don't worry, there's like, I'm giving you three ways. So if you don't have embossing powder, um, but you have other ways, and there's actually four ways. So I might do one of the ways that I did um, in a different way so that you can see the four different ways. Excuse me, but for now, we're gonna start. <laughs> I've got, um, this isn't embossing powder, if you're wondering. I really went to town with the static, um, anti-static bag, uh, which is basically, I think, I don't know for sure what they put in here, but I've heard it just like baking powder or something similar. <laughs> so um, I want to do that, but I just remembered, I'm going to just heat dry this to make sure the ink, and since I added the, um, the wet wipe to get a good impression, I just want to make sure it's super dry because if you want embossing powder to stick only to one place in your on your embossed paper you want to make sure you don't have any wet ink or wet spots where it's gonna stick so we've got hopefully mostly dry Cornstarch. Oh, right. It wasn't baking powder. It was cornstarch. Some, or something very similar or whatever. So I don't know if you can see. It's quite, the sun came out and I even closed the blind, but it, it's kind of half open. Um, there's like powder, but I, I don't care. I want to have like a good coat of powder. You can see it's all over my desk probably just shouldn't breathe this stuff and then I'm just gonna add the Versamark but I'm just gonna I'm gonna do it with my solid rare so that it's just running over the raised edges and not going in between so you want to keep rolling um, start like don't just go back and forth or it'll only be on one spot spot on your brayer this brayer works way better than the, I don't know if you guys have that old speedball one that Stampin' Up! used to have. It's That one is great with paint. Like I know, Yolanda, I think you use it all the time. I think you use, well, I don't know. I've seen people doing the jelly plating with um, paint and that, but, and I used to try and do these techniques with that one, and it just, it always kind of, I don't know. I don't know if it's just softer or what it is, but it, I don't know if it wasn't holding the ink as well or um, just, so, I don't know. I could never get as good of a um, 
roll <laughs> as if um, since I've had this one. So just a little note. So you can see it's only sticking to the raised portion. I don't know if you can see it because it's so bright. Let me know if you can't see and maybe I can close the blinds fully, but then it might be too dark. <sighs> I have to get some lighting. I'm still waiting because I'm pretty sure I'm moving upstairs when I get my new furniture, but that is to be seen if my furniture ever comes. Okay. And the nice thing too is you can always do more than one pass. Like I can heat this up now and if it's not like if there's not as much white as I would like, I can just go back and do it again. Because all you have to do is go over it with the brayer again, right? Like, so I see quite a bit of white here. Sorry. Oh, well, it is what it is. And then we're just going to, let me just heat it up. But it kind of, doesn't it, like the, the blend of the colors I find just kind of blend even better once you run it through the embossing machine. Maybe it's me. And so also, um, this is kind of a subtle look with the softer colors. If you wanted it to really pop with the white um, on top, you would obviously want to use darker colors. You can also use clear embossing powder if you just want it to look a bit darker. I don't think it would, it wouldn't show that much on this light of a coloring, but if you had like some colored cardstock or something and you wanted it to, just to kind of have that little bit of contrast, you could do clear, or you could use gold or sublime. Hum. <laughs> I forgot to warm up my uh, my facial muscles. There's, I had an argument with the doctor yesterday because I'm like, he's like, well, you basically have bursitis. Your muscles are too tight, and I'm like, mm-hmm. So we've gone over this with so many parts of me. We all know that my muscles are too tight, but why are my muscles too tight? Well, I don't know. You just have to use a foam roller. You have to use this. Yeah, it's like, I have that. I've done that. I did all that. I do it. There's something wrong with my muscles. <laughs> and now I can't remember where I was going with my story. <laughs> oh my gosh. Tight muscles. What does that have to do with embossing? <laughs> Hi, Linda. I can't, I totally can't remember where I was going with my story. Oh, my mouth. <laughs> Not being able to speak. That's what it was. Anyways, yeah. So my muscles are tight and sometimes my jaw, just even all my face, it just, it feels like I'm tongue-tied, but like more than tongue-tied. Anyways, I do my best. That's all I can do. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of like shiny and white now. Isn't that cool? Isn't that pretty? So if you look really close, you can see that little line down the middle and there's no dot like the other flowers. But really, who's going to notice that other than now that I pointed it out? Super pretty. Um, okay, this embossing plate is one of the new online exclusive ones. It's the Fun Patterns Embossing Folder. Okay, so then I've already pre-cut some stuff, you know, Magic of Television. But what I did, I will show you here. So I have used the Excellent Eggs stamp set and the Easter Bunny stamp set. This, the Excellent Eggs is from the mini catalog, which is here till the end of April, I believe. And then um, the Easter Bunny set is in the annual catalog. It was 
I believe it was in the mini last year, the spring mini. Um, it has the bunny and it. it has a punch that goes with it. If you're, um, <laughs> if you're like me and don't like fussy cutting, my hands, especially today are sore. So I've, I was, you'll see, I've been doing some fussy cutting, but my, my thumbs were hurting. So anyways, that's why I don't love fussy cutting. So those are the two I've used. I stamped um, and used the Versamark. I used Pool Party with this uh, stamp. And then there's, this set has a die set that goes with it, which is this one. So it has three like regular egg kind of um, cutouts with different kind of sh um, stitching. Like this one has the dots and the stitched, this one's stitched and then this one's dots. So this is the medium one that matches. So it matches, like the small one matches this one, the medium one matches this one. And the big one actually works um, really well with these um, cutouts. And you can do, um, like you can add your designs to your eggs, which is kind of cool. So anyways, it's a really fun set. I didn't have any eggs, so um, I thought that was a good one to have. So anyways, I've got my egg pre-done. You don't get to watch that. And then I also cut out this smaller egg with the bubble bath. So those two I did. I did not, oh, I did not pre-do the bunny. So let me... Um, I wonder if I should even just show you the finished card so you're not. Catch you later, Yolan. Um, you're not here all day, but I will. Mm. Yeah, you don't need to. You, the rest is all stamping and self-explanatory. So, through the magic of television, <laughs> here's the magic card. So here I stamped the bunny with um, bubble bath and I just punched it out using the punch that goes with. And then I have the two eggs and then I stamped the Happy Easter from the Excellent Eggs and I fussy cut it. <laughs> and then I just put it on black because I thought I was going to put it white and it just, it, it didn't pop as much. So I added the black to the background and I thought it pops a lot more. So that's the first one. You could do a brown bunny, you could do whatever. Our bunnies are still all very white because it's still very much winter here. Well, maybe not for long. It's supposed to warm up starting tomorrow. All right, and then it's gonna go from like crazy cold to like double digits warm. And then everything's gonna melt and everything's going to be messy. Like, can we not have an in-between? We have not had in-between. It's either like spring to summer warm or freezing cold. Okay, next card is... Which one should I do next? I'm going to save the... I posted one two weeks ago, I think. Because I knew I was going to do this. Um... And then, so if you saw it, you'll know it, but I'll save that one for last. So we will do this one. So this one is not using, the embossing folder is not from the online exclusives, but the stamps that I'm using is. So the embossing folder, oops, oh, I'm dropping everything here. The embossing folder. I'm going to use here is the layered florals. That one is out of the, um, it's out of the mini catalog. Sorry, I'm just trying to, <laughs> there's so many pieces and parts to these cards. I just don't have enough room, especially doing three. I think I'm going to have to go down to one card per live. Because then I, like, it just doesn't take up as much room. Why is this so pink? 
Oh yeah, I did have, I'm like, I didn't have pink in it when I ran it through. So this is the, yeah, the layered floor, once again, layered florals, 3D embossing folder. And I did use it, I believe, last live. Um, I find it goes really well with the new Magnolia bundle that's just out. So that's part of the new online exclusives. This is the, it's not a sweet, it's just a bundle, but it's got super, I love Magnolias. So this was on, and I just, I love when they have like kind of the freestanding flowers. So this is what I used on my last live. This time we're gonna be using the stamped flower and you'll see like these, oh, they're just, they stamp so pretty. Okay, but we're not stamping yet. I just find, doesn't it, these, these kind of look a little bit like Magnolias to me especially when you put them with them, then it looks like a magnolia. All right, so before I run it through the embossing folder once again, we are going to um, use a blending brush. And I chose to start with, I was gonna do a blend of um, Berry Burst and Bubble Bath, but then I thought, why not start with a, like the, the lighter color and just add the darker color because then you're adding less ink. You already have the start of your bubble bath. Um, so I just thought it would be easier. And kind of my goal, I didn't really end up using the wash, so I'm not gonna even worry about this bottom part. I just wanna do more of the top. I could even just, when I emboss, I could do it at an angle and have it coming off so that it doesn't do the full amount but either way you will see my madness okay the only thing you have to be careful about doing this method is don't stick your um your clothes into like this nice dark purpley color unless you have a nice dark purpley shirt on or something then that wouldn't be so bad I don't know why I'm like addicted to blending the colors. I really like how soft and like smooth it looks versus like, once again, I could just go ink to paper directly with the ink pad. I could use the brayer to get a really like solid look, but I just, I, I like, I like the softness of the brush, I think. Just a little bit more of that. A bit more. <laughs> That's a lot more, but I just want to go a bit darker. Right here. This is the one I'm debating if I should show you um, how to have the white pop through in a different way than what I did on my sample. So you can kind of see. There, and then it just kind of goes into the bubble bath. Okay, and then I'm just going to wipe all of this so I don't get a mess on everything. This is one of those, it's kind of like a red where it just like, even a baby wipe is rendered almost useless when you're done wiping that up. Okay. So we've got that. I'm going to close this. And then we're gonna run this through. So I shouldn't put these here. Need that. Come back with our big boss here. Sorry, I'm gonna go the other way because I like to do it with my right hand. Um, and this one is a 3D, so we don't need our two clear plates. We need 
our number one plate and our number four plate, which is meant for the 3D embossing folders. And once again, I'm not gonna wipe, I don't wanna wet this side because it'll pull all the color, but I am gonna come in and it doesn't matter, like, you know, this baby wipes dirty, it's gonna get some color on here, but it doesn't matter because the backside. And then we're gonna come in wherever or do we want to kind of um, what do I want to do I think I'm gonna do it this way because you'll see why in a minute we'll try it you will see my madness in a minute Okay. So we've got our nicely embossed and then it's kind of ends down there. It went a little further down than I probably would have liked, but that's okay. Okay. So we've got that. Now to get the white onto the flowers, you've got two options. You can use um, your Whisper White Pigment ink pad. I'm gonna use the refill and I'm gonna put it on my glass plate. And the reason being is because I've added color to this paper and as I, where's my dauber? So you, I, I usually have a, a white dauber designated for the white, but it pulls up the ink. So now I've got a lot of pink in here, and if I were to keep taking the white out of the pad, I would start making my white pinky on my pad. So I don't want that. So instead of using my ink pad, I'm just gonna use some white ink and put it on. Now, my sample is doing it this way. Um, I don't know if you wanna see it, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Let me show you the other option, um, and I can do the, or we can see how the other option, how well I like it, and then we can move on. So you can use a sanding block. Now, this isn't gonna turn white because I have pink behind it, but it will become, like it will have light pink kind of edges. So you can come in and you can kind of sand the raised edges. Just be very light. This is, I mean, this was, oh, now I've done it too much there. So, oh, and my paper's not dry, so that's why it's kind of peeling. Um, you can do it that way with a sanding block. This was from Stampin' Up. They don't carry them anymore. I don't know why. It's like foam and then like really fine um, sanding blocks. I think you can get some at the craft store. If not, you can always go to your hardware store and just get like the finest paper possible. Now I will show you the way that I did it because I'm not liking the sanding with the ink. It's just too wet, I think. I think if you were doing it just on colored, well, you wouldn't do it on colored, but you would want to use ink on white paper because you want the white in the background and our paper is solid all the way through. So unless you had, actually we do have, um, we have some specialty paper that is white on the inside. I can't remember what it's called. Anyways. Yeah, you could use a nail file, but a very, like, not the rough one that you're doing. Your, like, just a, yeah, like a buffing. Like, something that's really um, almost smooth. Like, you really don't want to go crazy with it but this is the other way and it's very easy especially um i think it's much easier with a 3d embossing folder you'd probably get a lot more white um on your background if you were using just a regular one that isn't as deep but it just depends kind of what look you're going for 
Like I like how it kind of almost washes into the bubble bath almost looks um, white at this point, just the way. But the, it is picking up some of the color. So then it, and then it also, I find it kind of um, pink, pinkifies <laughs> as the ink kind of blends in together. So I'm just lightly going over and you can see it didn't take a whole lot of ink. There. And then if you've got like some on the background that you don't like, just use your finger to kind of buff it out or you could take like a tissue or something, but just kind of buff. If you really wanted a solid background, like super dark, oh, I don't like the way that looks. Hmm. I just went way too much on the same spot. Anyways. Um, yeah, if you wanted like for it to really, really pop, you could um, ink up the back ground, like the back of your, the front, the front of the embossing, the part that's, the the background is raised and the flowers are, are indented. So you could ink this all with Berry Burst and run it through. You'll see my next card has a similar um, thing. And then your flowers, then your background would be very solid. This has a, a bit of a softer look, but it's still darker. So that's kind of where I went with that one. Now I'm going to set this aside and we're going to play with the Magnolia stamp because I wanted to show you that. So we've got a piece of basic white and then I'm going to stamp my flower here with Memento because I'm going to use my um, blend, stamp and blends. <laughs> Blending more, I couldn't come up with the word. Um, okay, so I'm gonna get kind of on like this. Make sure we get it good. And watch, like this is not gonna be like a black outline. It's like got all the soft kind of it. I love these ones because it kind of tells you where to color it's like how do i color this is how to color um so then i'm not well i can do one flower but i don't want to bore you guys and do all the coloring so what i did was i took some bubble bath the light in the dark and i took just the light berry burst because the berry burst is quite dark and so what i normally do with my blends for coloring is I like to come in and use the lightest one and I go everywhere and I try and saturate my paper a fair amount because it just helps those darker colors to blend easier because they can just kind of bleed into the wet paper versus when it's dry, then you tend to get those kind of lines and the lines stay. So um, then I took my bit, but I'm using the smaller tip. And I'm just going to come in and I'm going to color wherever it's kind of darker. You know, the dark lines and then it's a little bit darker here. A little bit here. And right now it looks horrible, right? You're like, what? <laughs> she's got a, she's got a chicken pock. Um, flower, but then I'm going to come in with my dark bubble bath and I'm going to just pull the color and smooth it out. And it'll keep on bleeding as it dries. So just give it a minute. And then for the leaves, I used, um, lemon lime twist and the granny apple green so here, i'll just do this one quick 
So this is light lemon lime, which I really like. Like it's a bright green, but it's it's kind of like a plant green to me. I used to always use um, old olive, and and when Granny Apple came out, I used Granny Apple, and I'd mix those. But now I like the Granny Apple just for a lighter leaf. If you're still going darker. Obviously, the other ones are good. So I like this option. And then I'm just coming back with my uh, lemon lime and going over to blend it. So you kind of have that washed. This is almost too polka dotty. I don't know what I did there. <laughs> oh, well, it is what it is. You can keep going over it if you're not happy with it. Um, but I'm just gonna do that much so you can see the rest of it and because I just want to show you how to do this part of the card and then I'll show you just I'll show you the card the finished card okay let's move this we'll bring out our big boss again here this time we need our cutting mats and our, so we need our number one and then our two, and then a three, and a three. Then we need our flower, and we need the die. See if I can find the die. Okay. So then we've got the die, and then we want to find where it goes. Right. Oops. And when you're happy with the placement, I because of the way I'm doing this, I am taping it down. I don't normally. And I want just the top part of my flower to cut. So I'm going to slide my plate and then I'm going to use um I'm going to turn my paper to be, so I've got it kind of coming to this leaf and to this leaf. And then I'm just gonna run it through. And it's only gonna cut the part that the plate is on. We've done this before, but it's a good reminder. You can always partially cut things. You don't always have to use the entire die and you can do all sorts of fun and crazy things. All right, so we've got our partially cut flower. Then I'm going to take my cutter here. And then I'm going to kind of eyeball like that's basically there and that's basically to there. And then when you put this down, you can kind of see if your cuts are in the middle there. And I'm just going to cut so I think I'm about there and I'm almost there. And then I'm gonna lift it up and I'm gonna come in from the top. And then I'm just gonna use my scissors to complete that. Clip here. And then you've got, um, so I'm not popping up the whole flower, right? It's just kind of a shaped flower with the bottom of, so that's why I had done this the way I did, because then I can put, but now I've kind of messed myself up with my angle. Oh dear me, because I don't have flowers there. I'm going to go all the way up. That's okay. It'll work. Then I have cut out the entire die using our masking paper. <laughs> You'll see it's all green. And I used the inside of my sweatshirt to get that lint on there so that I knew that it wasn't going to um, stick too much. And what I would recommend is I would recommend doing this, like cut this and the masking part 
before you color um, just because it could, if you're if it's too sticky it could pull up some of your ink but and sometimes it doesn't stick very well when it's all colored um, so <laughs> it could stick less it could stick it could pull color so I would stamp your flower cut this out and then do your coloring um, and then I'm just gonna come in I want this to be the bubble bath so again, you could use your brayer, you could use direct ink to paper, or you can use a blending brush. I'm gonna, you know what, I'm gonna try the, should I do direct or should I use the brayer? I'm gonna do direct. Let's, let's live wild and crazy. Oh, but that's darker than I wanted it. Oh well. Is what it is. We've got pink. It'll probably lighten up as it dries because there is a lot of ink on there right now. So you can probably barely see that, but there is pink all over the place. And then we get to do the ta-da. But before I do the ta-da, I want to dry it. <laughs> I love the reveals. I love when I get to pull something off and see. But since it's not colored, it's not going to be as big of a Ta -da! but anyways and you can reuse this like this is the second time I'm using it but because now I put the color it probably won't stick as well but there's your piece so I will show you the finished card and I just I just glued this straight down no dimensionals onto here and I cut it down a bit because it's a bit big um, and then I added these, the purple, the ones that go with the perennial lavender um, sweet, these ones, purple fine shimmer gems. These ones kind of looked very burstish to me. So I used them on here. And then once again, I fussy cut um, the happy birthday. So yeah, that's card number two. This is really bugging me. <laughs> I have to find a way to, maybe I'll add some, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll add some Versamark and I'll add some like gold or silver embossing powder just so that it kind of, and it'll just have like edges of, okay, I'll post that once I've done that. See, when you make mistakes, you come up with new ideas. <laughs> You never need to get upset because there's always a way to create something new. All right, last one. The one I had the most fun. Let me get all this stuff out of the way. And bring in the Zinnia 3D embossing folder. I love this suite. This is one of the new suites. I think I did this one a few weeks ago. So it had the Zinnia um, embossing folder in the background, but you, it, it wasn't the star of the show. Today, it's going to be the star of the show. Okay, and this is another 3D embossing folder and then we've got a piece of white as usual and we're gonna it's gonna go this way so I'm gonna have my paper this way and I'm just going to you can go um, again we're gonna take our memento and you can go direct or you can use the brayer sure which way I did I used direct but I had to you do it three times I think before I was happy with how dark the black was I wonder well, let's see let's see I want the whole thing 
be black and dark, like not just kind of a light wash. So there might be a better, I would not recommend using stays on because that's going to stain your embossing holder. I'm going to put my paper here and then I'm going to close on top of it. And I'm going to get my big boss here and I'm going to, I'm going to run it through more than one time. So obviously it's going to need, you probably could use like a, um, a thick, um, what was I going to say? You could spray it right with water and kind of get it to wash better, like to not wash better, but, um, to sink in better to the paper, but you'd want to use the thick white for sure. If not watercolor, um, so that's an option too, because you'll see. Oh, so you know what I'm going to do, which I forgot to do. Well, no, that's fine. I was going to say I should, this is what I should do. I'm going to open it this way. This is what I did the last time. And I'm going to tape down um, the edges, which might be difficult now that it's wet. Hang on. You can, um, it's easy enough to get it lined up because of the grooves that are there, but because it's so messy, you probably don't want to be putting your hands in there getting messy. So I'm just going to go like that so that... It's locked and loaded so then I can flip it like this and I can put more black down if I can find my <laughs> memento ink pad here it is okay. so yes usually misting it with water will get it to kind of sink in faster you can get the same results just by going over it two or three times <gasps> Oh, good, it landed on the plastic. <laughs> Dropped my <laughs> black ink. <laughs> Luckily, it's not on the carpet. Okay. And then you're just going to run it through again. And then you're going to take a peek and it still has lots of white, white speckles. So we're going to ink it up again. So the inkier your pad is the better, obviously. One thing I did forget to do is to wet my paper. So hopefully with all these run throughs, it doesn't start to tear. So it's still, I honestly would do it one more time because I still find there's a lot of the white there. And you'll see, when you see the finished one, why you want it to be solid. So you could do this with any color you could use and it honestly would be easier with one of our colors because the pads being softer will put more ink down so you could use like a a night of navy or a misty moonlight or an espresso or like any of the pretty peacock would look really pretty um, blackberry bliss like a just a dark color I mean, you could do it with light color too, but it would go a lot faster. <laughs> That's my point. So depending on your level of patience, see, for some reason, I think it's because I'm doing it on the edge of this thing 
and I'm just not able to. Hang on, let me just ink up on a solid surface if I can find one. This bottom part of the... I think I'm just doing it on the edge of the machine and it's not able to get the pressure it needs. Okay, let's try this. Hopefully this is the one. Let's run it through this way. Let's see if that helps. You can run um, you can run the embossing folders with the spine on the side, just as long as you're not going into the spine. The moment of truth. Oh, there we go. Okay, it's still, I don't know what's going on there. Anyways, it's much better. So if I had done all the passes using a solid surface, it would have been beautifully black, but it's beautifully black enough. Black enough, okay. And then all you have to do is rinse this off or wipe it or whatever, you can, um, it'll come right off. So we'll set that aside, oh my goodness. My hands are like pink and black and all the colors. All right, so now you're like, okay, you've got a black and white. I mean, this is beautiful in itself. I am gonna cut this down, so it's not gonna be the end of the world when it comes off here, but you might wanna make your paper a wee bit bigger so you have, um, you don't have to worry about messing up a spot you might need to use on your card. All right, so you could use this and just have a really cool black and white looking background, but why not take it one step further? So once again, we're gonna pull in our bubble bath, our berry burst. I didn't even realize like when I was creating each card that I was kind of using the same colors over and over. Um, Lemon Lolly for the center of the flowers. And then we need some Lemon Lime Twist for the stems and maybe some Granny Apple, we'll see. Then we need um, smaller brushes because it's easier to control what you're doing. So I've got a yellow, Actually, this might be, I don't know, this must be the green one. And then, or maybe I'll use this one for bubble bath. I don't want, let's see, I don't know how much ink there is. Oh, crappy do, I just put ink on my card face. I thought it was a scrap piece of paper. Oh, well, we'll just go with that. Okay, so I'm going to start with the lighter color. And I'm going to do my flowers. And you probably can't even see that because I can barely see it. And I'm just going to come in and I'm going to try and avoid the... Um, um, the center of the flower because I want to put in um, yellow there. The pink is very hard to see. It's almost not worth <laughs> doing. But we'll just, let's just go direct, maybe that'll work. So right now, like this isn't, um, there's no embossing powder or anything on it. So it's just going to sink into the white here. It's just white paper. Oh my goodness, why is there no more ink on my ink pad or what? I 
need to re-ink that. It just seems so light all of a sudden. You can kind of see it, but it's very light. Okay. Oops. Hold this one. Okay, so we've got some light pink going. I'm not gonna worry about putting berry burst on top of light pink because it'll just blend in. Our... And then we're just gonna try and do a little more towards the center. I want my the lightness to be on the outside and the darker parts to be on the inside, but you know, you only have so much control <laughs> with a brush. If you really wanted to control it, you could use um you could use your markers, you could use your blends. Lots of options depending on kind of the look you're going for and how detailed and precise you want things. <laughs> the perfectionist in you. But I kind of like, um, I like the imperfection. I like and of just the, I don't know. I don't know what to call it. The, messy look. <laughs> and I'm gonna take the lemon lolly. I'm gonna do this center too, let me just. The lighter colors, you need a lot more. Like maybe I should use, I might need to use daffodil. Oh, there we go. Hang on. You just need a large amount of the lighter color if you want it to pop. Not pretty already. I don't know, maybe some of you won't like this, but um, I think it just pops. Like, I just, it's such a different look that you can get. And you can do this with any embossing folder. You don't have to have these ones. And we've got our lemon lime, the greens. Oops, it looks like I seem to have forgotten a flower. <laughs> and the nice thing with having the black there is it just kind of like, you know, obviously I'm coloring onto the black, but it doesn't show because the black is there. That's why you want to have as much black, like as solid of a black as possible. Because you don't want it to show where you've colored. And like where the speckles are, like I'm gonna get the green. So it kind of shows my cheater ways that I actually haven't colored these where they're not stamped or they're a bit more mystical. And down here. 
here. I think with the one, my sample that I did, I, I did come in with some granny. Oh, I just used granny apple. <laughs> I took the wrong one. <laughs> Maybe I should go over more of them to darken it up a little. Or I might have even used something darker because my green on my sample seems darker. That's okay. All right. I think I'm happy with that. Not pretty. So pretty. And then I don't know if you remember, I'll show you the finished card since it's been a while since I posted it. All right, here is the finished card. So I obviously used more Berry Burst, a little less green. I got a lot, I'd probably go back and do more um, Berry Burst to cut, like I really got, I was really messy. I really got a lot of green on, on here because I left it so light with the, with the pink. And now I just got it on the green. Okay, I'm going to stop here because, you know, I was obviously being way more careful off the camera. But that is, so the Year Two Kind comes from the, um, you can tell, I tried with their, I can't remember what the, it, there was a foil that's like a berry burst color. Um, these are the well said dye. Oh, no, wanted to say dyes. Sorry. Um, I just, I didn't like the look of, it just kind of, I don't know, what do you think? I just didn't really love the look of it. I liked the black because it just kind of pulled in something, something, something. I preferred the black. Anyways, and I used, I don't know if you can tell. I used a black foil. I think it was from Halloween or something um, instead of just plain black. So that's my bling. So anyways, those are the three cards and four ways to get the raised edge white. And then you can color it. You can leave it. You can um, do whatever you wish. There are the cards. So... Hopefully you have a great rest of your week. Hopefully you can see the cards because once again, I'm frozen as usual. And uh, <laughs> yeah, hopefully we'll see you guys next week and stay healthy, stay warm and have a great rest of your week. All right. Bye.